Hello, everyone, and welcome to the lecture on geospatial data sources. I have my awesome data mug in honor of this lecture here with me. But today we are going to talk about where we can find geospatial data um, and uh, what formats they come in and so forth. So we're going to start with something that you are already um, aware of uh, because of the intro course. If you remember in the Introduction to Geospatial Technology course, you used POSDA to find data for various assignments and projects. And POSDA is what's called a state GIS uh, data clearinghouse, and it just happens to be Pennsylvania's. And data clearinghouses um, tend to or state data clearing houses tend to have uh, themes and data um, on there that is kind of more like base data, data that's applicable to a wide range of applications and uh, needs that people may have. So when you look over here, you're going to see the data shortcuts are, you know, some of those bigger themes like boundaries, imagery, um, transportation, and uh, so forth. Uh, so again, you uh, became acclimated with the site in the Introduction to GIS class, and we're going to go a little bit further with it this uh, semester, but this is just a reminder um, that this exists and that other um, states have similar types of data clearinghouses. Uh, POSDA, Pennsylvania's um, clearinghouse, is managed by uh, Penn State University in uh, collaboration with the state of Pennsylvania. It's actually housed up at um, State College. But um, on these clearinghouses, the data that's on here is shared by other entities um, that produce the, the data. So the data is, is uh, given to them by uh, local, state, and federal governments, uh, by nonprofit uh, agencies, by uh, academia, and so forth. So the data all uh, comes from somebody else. POSDA doesn't produce any of this data. And that's something when we get to the metadata lecture um, later this week, you're going to find that, you know, uh, each uh, uh, data layer that you download from um, POSDA, uh, the actual source of it is not POSDA, it is like PennDOT, for example, or the Nature Conservancy, and, and uh, so forth. So it's um, good to have that distinction that POSDA is just a website that houses data, nothing more than, than that. Um, in addition to state uh, clearing houses, uh, we also um, can get GIS data from counties. Um, Essentially, every county in the state of Pennsylvania and, you know, throughout the country have their own GIS departments and uh, county GIS departments are responsible for um, managing uh, parcel data or cadastral uh, data. You'll hear both terms, but you mostly hear parcel uh, data um, by practitioners uh, using uh, the information. And essentially what parcel data is, is um, boundary lines, so like you see in the um, image that you see here. And each one of these parcels has land owner information attached to it. So if we would click on one of these, for instance, we would get uh, the land owner um, name, the address, um, uh, when it was um, uh, bought, uh, potentially who owned it uh, previously, uh, and other information about that particular parcel. Each county manages their parcel data sets a little bit differently, and um, each county's parcel data sets ha have different attributes. It's really uh, on based on what that county deems as important to have in that data set. When they share that parcel data out with others, a lot of times some of those attributes will be removed um, for various reasons. In particular, the landowner name is often uh, removed from it uh, just so that um, the county then provides the footprints of each of the uh, um, parcels. Another a uh, data set that they uh, tend to um, manage is a zoning data set, um, land use data sets, and so forth, easements, uh, which properties are in clean and green, uh, you know, state programs of that nature. They also might have facilities like fire stations, hydrants, and uh, police stations, anything that's particular to that uh, that county, and then recreation, things like parks and, and so forth. So there's a number of examples um, of um, county GIS department, and many of them have their own uh, website. Um, counties can be 
that are adjacent to each other can be so different in what they provide and what they give the public access to. So we're going to look at two examples. And in your assignment, you're going to actually look at um, more examples that are within uh, central Pennsylvania. So you can see what counties have, what they provide, what you can get, and all of that type of thing. So we'll start with Lancaster County. If I can click on it. There we go. So this is Lancaster County. Um, and you're going to see that um, they have um, an interactive mapping application. And this includes things like parcels and, and roads. Uh, so you can proceed to the site and then um, look at um, any property lines uh, within uh, the county. And you can look at imagery, school districts, and so forth. So you can zoom into any of these, uh, turn on whatever data layers that you want to be uh, looking at. Um, and then uh, some of these give you the option to uh, download um, the information. And some of them are just uh, viewers. Um, going back to uh, the main page, um, you see that they also have links to ArcGIS Online, which you are all becoming familiar with. Uh, you used it a little bit in the intro class. Um, and for, for those of you that may have taken cartography or some other GIS classes, you probably have definitely used it a little bit more. But we're going to delve a lot more into ArcGIS Online this semester, and you're going to see uh, what it, it can do. But a lot of counties now share their maps via ArcGIS online. Um, this county also provides, Lancaster County also provides just links to POSDA and other um, data providers within the, the Commonwealth. Um, if you go up here to their GIS data link, uh, you can see what kinds of data that they share um, uh, with the, the public. And in this particular county, you have to do a, a request to get uh, the information. Sometimes they have some of this that's downloadable. Uh, sometimes they don't have it as downloadable. Again, it's all contingent upon the county and how they want to do things. Um, the other um, example is Dauphin County. Um, and Dolphin County, similar to um, Lancaster County, has um, a parcel viewer. They actually use have a lot of interactive maps that the public can use. And one of the more popular ones for any county is the parcel viewer because it allows um, residents to look at their property lines, make sure things are, you know, looking good. And it's also just really helpful. Like if you're for instance, looking to buy a house or um, something like that, it allows you to look at uh, the, the property. So like if we just kind of search, just zoom in um, at a random place. But if I zoom in, I can click on any one of these properties. And what comes up is information about that um, property. It gives you some really basic um, info. But then if you click on the more info, it takes you to the tax record, which then shows you the land owner information, uh, the mailing address, the, the, the PIN number. Um, this PIN number is something I'm going to be referring to a lot um, this semester when we talk about parcel data, uh, because that's really the, the identifier for each um, parcel, um, the unique identifier for each uh, parcel. But you can kind of get a sense of what is provided for um, uh, each one of these. And again, a really valuable service to residents. And if you do a comparison between the Lancaster County one and this one, it's, it's kind of neat to see what um, one provides and what one doesn't provide and, you know, kind of stack them up um, with one another. And that's essentially what you're going to be doing in your assignment. You're going to be going in and looking at these a, a little bit more deeply so that you have the opportunity to interact with them and see which ones um, work well, what are the shortcomings, and what are the things that are just completely awesome. So um, you, you'll have the opportunity, again, to look at some of the uh, uh, surrounding uh, counties. So um, that's just um, some examples of, you know, uh, of county GIS department websites. And this is a, an example of some of the um, data that they uh, provide. Um, another really good and newer source of, of, of geospatial data is what's called Open Data Sites. And Open Data is um, a part of ArcGIS Online for organizations. So the ArcGIS Online account that you will be using this semester has this functionality where organizations can configure their own um, open data site to share the, the data that they have. And 
Esri makes it really easy to construct this uh, site. It's widget based. Um, you just kind of plug and play with, with the, the options so that you don't really need to be an expert to put together um, a site that allows you to share data. And I have a number of examples uh, listed here, um, going from the state level to the county level to a city, and then one that's a little bit more um, international in, in scope. But when you look at all of them, you're gonna see that they all look very similar. They, they just are designed um, with a, a little a bit of, of a different flavor. So if we go to uh, the uh, PA website, Um, you can see um, this is their page, and there tends to be a little bit um, more robust than some others um, and have a, a few more options, and it's not necessarily just data. So for this one, I'm just going to go to the data catalog to see what they have uh, available, and it takes you to, um, you know, some of the um, uh, data sets that they have, and uh, opioids are a big uh, data set in, uh, in the state of Pennsylvania being shared, um, and so you can download data pertaining to uh, all of these things that you see listed here. And I'm not going to show you how to access it on this page because I think there's better examples and ones that are a little bit cleaner and more representative of the way that open data sites generally work. This one ha is a little bit more customized, uh, so it, it doesn't necessarily look like uh, a lot of the others. So with that, we, we will go to um, York counties because York counties tends to be a little bit more common in terms of what is produced by organizations because uh, it's kind of very simple, clean, and um, really just has data by category. And this one uh, does tend to take a little bit longer to load for whatever uh, reason. <laughs> um, but you can see up here it has the, the data categories that you can download GIS uh, data from. So that's actually getting the, the geospatial data to pull it off to use in like ArcGIS Pro, or ArcMap, whatever. And then if you scroll down, these are online mapping applications similar to what we were looking at with the parcel viewers. These are kind of um, just uh, web uh, mapping applications that, that uh, maps that are hosted on a website and you can just interact uh, with them. But I'm going to go to one of these and unfortunately the, the icons aren't coming up because it's being a little bit fussy, but we'll go to boundaries. And this is what comes up for uh, any uh, one of the data sets. So like, let's say that we want to get school districts in uh, York County. We click on that. And what's really cool about open data sites, and, and it makes me remember that you were actually introduced to this in the intro to GIS class uh, when you um, ha had to download the uh, bridges for one of the assignments that was off of the PennDOT open data site. But um, here you can see that it gives you a preview of the data that you're going to be downloading. If you go to your download option, it gives you various formats in which you can download it, and you can download it as a spreadsheet, KML, shapefile, or geodatabase. In terms of what we would pull off for use in ArcGIS Pro, we would either pull the shapefile or the file geodatabase. And I would highly suggest, um, and we'll be talking about this next week, that you start pulling the file geodatabases because that's the more recent uh, data model. I know we've worked with shapefiles a lot in the intro class, um, but a, a file geodatabase tends to be the preferred um, uh, for format. Um, KMLs are great. If you get, if you want to be like opening this in uh, Google Earth, KMLs are the file format for Google Earth. And then maybe you just want a, a spreadsheet. Um, in G GIS, if when you have uh, a shapefile or file geodata database option, you take those, you just ignore <laughs> the, the, the spreadsheet. Another cool thing that can be done with this, and again, we'll get into this as we delve more into the uh, semester, you can use this to create web maps and story maps. Um, again, in the intro class, um, you created a story map, a map tour, and that was a really basic um, story map, but we can do more sophisticated ones, and this allows you to add it right to a story map and get going on that creation. So lots of really cool stuff you can do with this. Um, in terms of looking at the data in, in a little bit more um, detail, you can see uh, what attributes 
uh, are in the attribute table, which is, is helpful because sometimes that's why you're downloading it, um, because you're interested in that information, not just the, the, the geography of, of things. So this helps you see if, if it's uh, something that's uh, useful. And then if you click on data, you can see, you know, what is actually in the data. You can see that it has the school district name and some, some other um, attributes, but nothing really overly amazing just because this, this is really meant to be just kind of a reference layer. And if you want to add attributes to it, you, we can do that by the process of a join or just by uh, manually entering, entering that uh, data. So open data sites uh, are a really valuable place to go for um, uh, geospatial data. And it's one that you're going to see a lot more of um, in the upcoming um, years. Um, now, some other national um, places where you can get uh, geospatial data. Uh, USGS has a number of different um, data sets that are available, um, and they are national in scope. And because they're national in scope, they may not necessarily have the higher resolution data that you might want for a particular project, though that is starting to change slightly where they are getting a little bit more um, um, detailed uh, information. But a really good launching point to explore uh, the, the USGS's um, geospatial data is uh, by just going to their National Geospatial Program uh, website. It's not listening to my voice commands. There we go. So here we are, and it uh, shows you some of the quick links. And some of those quick links are what I was showing on my PowerPoint slide. Uh, for instance, um, the 3D program. Um, we worked a, a little bit with um, digital elevation models in the Introduction to Geospatial Technology class. This houses um, uh, digital elevation models or DEMs on a national level is high resolution data and it also um, provides LIDAR data uh, which we're going to be using uh, a, a quite a bit this a semester but LIDAR is really highly detailed and highly um, high resolution um, elevation uh, data sets uh, so that information is uh, located on uh, this site. Um, you also have the the basic viewer in which you can download pretty much most of the the, the main data sets that um, USGS provides. And I like this interface because it just simplifies the process of getting data where you're not jumping around from site to site. So, for instance, if I um, turn on this this one, it tells me everything that's uh, available. And then if I go to show availability. Um, it will, uh, on the map, show you which areas have uh, that um, in information. And likewise, if I just go to imagery um, and want to uh, look to see what's available, I can, I can uh, do that. So this is a really great place to go and uh, download a number of uh, data sets um, that you might need in terms of elevation, imagery, and, and anything that's national in scope. Um, we tend to work a lot with Pennsylvania data in the intro class. We're going to kind of branch out of um, working with just solely Pennsylvania data so that you can um, explore some of these websites that might offer uh, national data sets uh, once you, you know, step outside of that footprint of uh, Pennsylvania. Um, this is, um, again, just uh, another um, program from the USGS, but this is their uh, ortho imagery. It's just, you know, um, one meter resolution um, imagery. Uh, they're seamless uh, images. Uh, they're rectified to remove distortion. So these are downloadable from that site that I just uh, showed you. Um, another um, data set that is important in terms of an analysis is the hydrography uh, data set, water bodies. So that you can get things like um, streams, um, rivers, lakes, and again, water bodies um, from this particular uh, data set. And again, you'll get uh, some practice in using this this semester. Um, one of the cool things that um, when you get to the advanced class that we do is that we use um, hydrography or uh, digital elevation models to actually delineate um, 
streams, uh, watersheds, basins, and so forth. So there's a lot of really cool hydrological tools available in ArcGIS Pro and ArcMap. Um, another data set that we'll be getting familiar with this semester is the uh, National Land Cover uh, Database. Uh, land Cover is one of the most highly sought out um, data sets um, for environmental types of questions. And this is um, the um, website to go to to get uh, some of that data. Um, you're going to see that some of the resolution on it isn't, you know, um, as fine as some other data sets. This is 30 meter by 30 meter uh, resolution, which basically means that pixel is 30 meters by 30 meters and has one value. And we kind of talked about that a little bit in the data models lecture um, and what that, what, what that means. But we'll be getting into that a, a little bit more in um, when we look at how big is a pixel uh, in the upcoming weeks so that you can kind of compare what a one meter uh, pixel of a 10 meter and a 30 meter, what the difference is that uh, makes in, in a data set because it is quite significant and it's really uh, quite, quite a big deal. And then kind of um, shifting away from um, natural resource types of data sets, um, going to data sets that um, look at demographics and people. Um, you're all familiar with the U.S. Census is uh, the U.S. The, the agency that is responsible for uh, taking a tally of um, the country's population every 10 years and they do um, uh, surveys in between that um, at three and five year intervals as well. Um, but one of the um, data sets that's really uh, useful when doing demographic analysis is uh, having the census geography, um, having the boundaries for states, counties, congressional districts, um, and then the smaller geographic units where you can really do the high resolution or the high, um, uh, the more detailed uh, analysis is at the block and block group level. And that essentially is a city block. So you can really be looking at uh, demographics on a very um, fine um, scale uh, with these data sets. And when you download these data sets, they're really kind of, um, uh, there's not much to them other than the geography. They don't have any cool attributes in them or anything like that. And that's what this um, uh, site is uh, here for this is where you can download all the demographic data that you might want to attach to those um, census blocks or tracks, whatever, um, by doing a, a join. But all of the census geography is available available in both a shapefile and geodatabase um, format. And just to kind of show you a quick example of what this looks like in ArcGIS Pro, I'm going to turn that off and we're going to go to my add data. And uh, right here, you see uh, the, the, this is all the census geography. So um, actually, I'll turn my um, counties back on in a moment after my blocks add. But uh, this is the block um, data for the state of Pennsylvania. And notice um, how small uh, these geographic units are. And I'm going to turn my counties. I'm going to. Um, Hollow out that symbology, and then I'm going to pop that on top of blocks so you can see both. Um, and if we kind of scroll in and just kind of zoom in here on Dauphin County, um, each one of these is what's called a census block, and uh, you can get data then to attach uh, to this, like median income, population, um, poverty level, um, you you name it. But if we uh, look at this. Um, uh, data. Let me just select that and um, let me go to its attributes over here. I'm still getting used to ArcGIS Pro myself. This is new to me as well as it will be you to you. <laughs> um, but these are the attributes associated with um, each of the census blocks, which, as I told you, really isn't much. The key um, piece of information in here is this uh, geo ID, which is the unique identifier for each block. And it's that unique identifier that we would then download 
uh, data like in a spreadsheet and do a join on that to attach the attributes uh, to it. I'm also going to show you a way in ArcGIS Online that is um, a lot easier to attach attributes uh, to uh, any data set that you might be uh, interested in. Um, but again, the, the point of this is that um, uh, census tracts are a really um, uh, our census data is a really useful um, data set to have because of uh, the analysis that can be done on demographic um, topics. Last, I'm going to end with the Web Soil Survey and the Geospatial Data Gateway. Both are um, products of the Department of Ag, the uh, Natural Resource uh, Conservation Service, NRCS. Um, the Web Soil Survey allows you to download soils data for the entire country, and this allows you to download it for your particular area of interest, um, and you can also then download it on a state uh, level. I have a longer video um, after this that sh demonstrates how to use the Web Soil Survey and also how to use the ge Geospatial Data Gateway, so I won't go into detail here, only to mention that these are two really great uh, data sources um, uh, to have uh, in the back of your head as we're moving forward in this class uh, so that you know, you know, um, options for finding geospatial data. Um, things change in the upper level classes where I don't give you as much in terms of data sets and uh, so forth, I have you find them so that you get the experience of learning how to find them and how to um, aggregate them and manipulate them to get them into a format that's usable for your your project because that's a big part of what geospatial technicians do. Uh, they uh, massage data to get it into the, the exact format for a particular product uh, project and I want you to get that experience so that um, you know how to do it when you're out in the uh, professional world. So that's all I have about uh, data sources. I hope this was helpful and uh, let me know if you have any questions.